So when it comes to this chapter on genetics, there are certain terms that you have to understand in order to be able to answer the genetic problems we'll be working on. One of the main focuses that we'll have this chapter is just looking at problems where you'll be told certain traits about the parents, and then you'll have to predict the traits that are passed on to their offspring. In order to be able to do this, you have to recognize certain terms that we'll be using over and over this chapter that will just make up the foundation of getting information out of the problems. I hate to connect this too much to math because I know some people don't like math and this kind of scares them away, but if you think about reading a word problem in math, there are certain important terms you're looking for that help you get the information you need out of the problem. That's exactly how these terms are going to be this chapter. If you master the terms in this video, you'll be able to get the important information out of the problem, which is the first step in you being able to answer the Punnett Square problems we're working on this chapter. To help make this point, look at this diagram. This is a little bit better quality than the one I was using previously. If you watched the last video, you'd remember that there are a bunch of different genes that are coded for in pea plants. And Gregor Mendel, the main scientist we're talking about this chapter, was studying these traits in pea plants. All of the things listed in the top of this diagram are different traits or different genes that the pea plants have. So for example, there is a gene for flower color. There are two different alleles for that gene. One allele would be purple, the other allele is white. The thing that we're focusing on in this video, because that information was really covered in the previous one, is what happens if you take a parent that has purple flowers and breed it with a parent that has white flowers. If you remember from before, this is the idea of producing a hybrid. Some kind of a, a species that, or a, an individual rather, that's a mixture of two different traits. So it's a mixture of the purple flower and the white flower. This chart down here, the F1 series, that represents the offspring. So what this is showing you is if you have two parents, one parent that has purple flowers and one parent that has white flowers, and you were to crossbreed those two together, you end up with offspring that have all purple flowers. What this tells us is that purple is dominant to white. Now, this is a term that you have to recognize this chapter. The idea of dominance is if you mix two traits together, the dominant trait is the one that will appear in the offspring. The offspring technically still has alleles for the recessive trait. In this case, white would be the recessive one. But those traits do not appear in what's called their phenotype and what they look like. So, um, we're looking at another example here, if we look at flower position and you mix axial and terminal, remember axial, the flowers in the middle, terminal, the flowers at the top, all of the offspring will have axial flowers, which tells us that axial is dominant to terminal. So just to define these a little bit, get our chart out of the way, we'll look at dominant first. So dominant will just be explained as a trait that always appears in the offspring. if it's found in the parent. So now recessive this would be a trait that's always or I guess we would say that is only found in the offspring if it comes from both parents. So think about this if we go back to that chart which I'm just gonna squish this text down for a second I promise I'll put this back up in a second but if we go back to this chart the only way to get white flowers would be to have both parents having white flowers. If both parents were white, then all of the offspring would be white. That shows us that they're recessive, but if 
we mix a purple and a white, the white trait disappears, showing that purple is dominant. So I'll put that back up for you if you need this one. So dominant, again, a trait that always appears in the offspring if it's found in just one of the parents. It doesn't matter uh, which one it is, as long as it's found in at least one. Recessive is a trait that's only found in the offspring if it comes from both of the parents. So there's another thing we have to look at when it comes to these traits and getting into like dominant and recessive in a little bit more detail. And this is going to be how we're going to represent dominant and recessive traits when it comes to answering these Punnett square problems. One of the things that we're going to use to represent them are letters. And if you look at, again, flower position, we said that purple is dominant to white. What that means is if we're representing the color purple, we would represent that with a capital P. So capital P equals purple. Lowercase p, which I usually write mine in cursive, since um, it's kind of hard to tell the difference between capital and lowercase with a letter like P here. A lowercase p would represent white. In the same sense, if we go back to this one, that um, yellow is dominant to green. So for, um, for a yellow trait, we would represent that with a capital Y, because yellow is dominant. If you look at this, if we mix yellow and green together, we get yellow. Yellow is dominant, so capital Y would represent yellow. Lowercase y then represents green. So this is going to be the way that we're, we're just representing these things with letters. The key to this, I'll write this one down for you. The first letter of the dominant trait. that becomes the letter used for that trait. Keep in mind, the trait is not the color. For example, um, for, for this one, the trait is not purple or white. The trait is flower color. That's the gene. So we're using capital P to represent flower color. Capital P represents purple, lowercase p represents white. You know, Y doesn't necessarily represent yellow, it represents the color of the pea plants, or the, uh, the, the actual peas from the pea plant. So capital Y represents yellow, lowercase y represents green. So that's what I mean by using this term here, you've got to pick that one up. The idea of the trait, uh, you've got to use the dominant letter, or the, the letter that starts with the, uh, the dominant trait, for that trait. So there's one final concept for us to talk about and that is the different ways to represent plants that have different traits that go along with them. I'm going to stick with something a little bit different this time since I think flower position gets a little, or flower color rather, gets a little difficult because capital P and lowercase p kind of look the same. Uh, we'll end up going with flower position for this one. So remember, axial is dominant to terminal, which is shown by the fact that if we mix axial and terminal, we get an axial offspring. What that means is there's technically um, two different ways to get axial. One way we could get it is if the individual gets an axial trait from both parents. Remember, in this case, capital A represents axial. And then if you've been following along, lowercase a is going to represent terminal. So capital A, capital A, that would equal an axial individual. Another way that you could get an axial individual is if it gets an axial gene from one parent and a terminal gene from another. This is actually what ends up happening in the diagram represented above. If we look up here, this axial individual has one axial parent and one terminal parent, which means this individual is getting an axial gene from one, which would be the capital A, and then a terminal gene from the other plant, or a terminal allele, rather, which would be the, the lowercase a. So the only way to get one that's terminal would be to have one that's lowercase a, lowercase a, that would be terminal. The only way that would work 
would be if both of the parents were terminal. So instead of being axial terminal, this would have to be terminal and then a second terminal parent up there at the top. So these letters are going to represent things in a way that will allow us to put them into a Punnett square eventually and then begin comparing them together. Uh, there will be a separate video on how to actually set that up and how to read a problem and figure those kinds of things out. But uh, the key to this is just to remember that the capital letter is going to be representing the dominant allele for that trait. So for example, if we go up to pod color, the dominant allele here is green. Because if you mix green and yellow, green is going to be the one that ends up showing up in the offspring. So the only way to get the recessive trait is if it gets the recessive allele from both of the parents. So I know, again, this video is kind of like just a lot of terminology, but there are certain terms that you have to understand before we can move forward and begin working with some of these problems. So there's only a few more. Uh, we'll talk about some of them in class. We'll sort of reinforce this and go through some examples in class tomorrow. As always, I appreciate you watching and take some time to answer the questions at the end of this video. Thank you.